All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to talk about the law of cosines, which is a very neat generalization of the Pythagorean theorem. And by the way, this law of cosines, it's also sometimes called El Cauchy's formula. Formula, which is Arabic. And in case you wanna know how to write this in Arabic, it's just like this, El Cauchy. El Kashiun or something. I don't know much Arabic. I only took two years, but this is what I remember. Anyway, so as I said, this is the generalization of the Pythagorean theorem. So let me remind you what the Pythagorean theorem says. It says that if you have a triangle, a right triangle with sides A, B, and C, then the hypotenuse squared, so A squared, equals to the sum of the squares of the other side, a squared equals b squared plus c squared, which raises a question. What if we don't have a right triangle? What if we just have an arbitrary triangle, uh, which here looks equilateral with sides a, b, and c? Okay. Well, thinking of this as the hypotenuse, we still have that a squared equals b squared plus c squared. But we have to subtract an extra term. And that extra term is minus two times b times c times cosine of this angle. And by the way, this angle again came from the law of sines. It's just, again, if you think of this as a flashlight, it's just the light that flashes towards your hypotenuse A. So this is what's called the law of cosines. And again, the way I remember this is, it's just like the Pythagorean theorem, but you have to subtract this minus two BC times cosine of this angle, which I like to remember as, well, if you expand out B minus C squared, that's b squared plus c squared minus 2bc. So you see minus 2bc, but this extra cosine term. Or you can remember this as do b squared plus c squared and then repeat b and c. So minus 2b and plus times c times cosine of that angle. And this is wonderful in order again to determine uh, lengths and sometimes angles of arbitrary triangles. And in fact, today, let me show you two examples. So first example, I don't know where that happened. Okay. So first example, suppose you have this triangle with sides uh, four, seven, and this angle 48. And the question is simply find all the angles and the sides of this triangle. Well, notice what we have. We have this angle, the sides next to it. So think of it as the hands of this angle. And we want to figure out the length of this side. Well, this is perfect for the Pythagorean theorem, or no, the law of cosines, because hmm, what the law of cosines says here, it says that hypotenuse squared equals to four squared plus seven squared and again, minus two times, you repeat this four and this seven and cosine of this angle. So again, the light that shines upon this wall, which is 48. And then you calculate this. So the nice thing is you can actually calculate this. So question mark squared becomes 65 minus, I believe two times 28, which is 56 and then cosine of 48, which you can write as, so if you wanna approximate some values, so uh, question mark squared is 27.528, or again, we'll just type it into your calculator and keep that as answer. So question mark is just square root of 27.528, which is roughly 5.25. Great, so we found actually all the sides of the triangle. We found one side is four, the other one is seven, 
the other one is roughly 5.25, and we are 48. And all that's left to do is figure out uh, the angles. And for this, since we know, you know two sides, and, we, and we, since we know the angle side, side and angle, we should use the law of sines. So remember, what does the law of sines say? It says opposite over sine of this angle. So seven over sine of question mark equals again, opposite over uh, sine of this angle. So 5.25 over sine of this angle, 48. And this allows us to solve for sine by simply cross multiplying. So 5.25 sine of question mark equals seven sine of 48. And then sine of question mark simply divide by 5.25, it's seven sine of 48 over 5.25, which gives you sine of question mark. It's roughly 0 0.99, so 0 0.991 if you wanna be more specific, which remember for the lesson of law of sines, this gives you question mark is either arc sine of 0.99 which is roughly 82.5 or question mark is 180 minus that. So 180 minus 82.5, which is 97.5, which at this point gives us two scenarios, but we need to check which one makes sense. Again, we had in both cases, this, those two sides were four and seven, and this was 48, 48, 4, 7, and we found 5.25, 5.25, and this angle. So the only choices are either this angle is 82.5 or this angle is 97.5. Now, um, again, we need to do the sanity check. So let's check all the, these other angles. So it's just, 180 minus 48 minus 82.5. And I believe that gives you 49.5. And this other choice, which is 180 minus 48 minus 97.5. And that gives you 34.5. Wait a moment. There's no contradiction here so far because we didn't get a negative angle. But think of it as follows. You maybe need to erase this just for clarity. Because always check if your triangle makes sense, okay? Because this is for the smallest angle is 48. So the corresponding, the length of the corresponding side should be the smallest, but this is not true. Because here the smallest angle is 48, 49.5 is bigger, but so in particular, since this angle is bigger, this side should be bigger than 5.25. So in fact, this triangle doesn't really make sense. So in other words, always make sure that the smallest angle goes with the smallest side. Here the smallest angle is 48, so this should be the smallest side. But that's not true because the smallest side is four. Or conversely, make sure that the smallest side goes with the smallest angle. So this is the smallest side, which means this should be the smallest angle, but doesn't make sense because we have this 48. This triangle is invalid. But what about this? Okay, well, the biggest angle is 97.5. This is the biggest side. The smallest angle is 34.5. This is the smallest side. And this is the medium angle and the medium side. So in fact, this makes sense. And this is our final triangle. So again, this is not an issue of law of cosines, but remember for the law of sines, you always have, I mean, you always have two choices of the angles, but in, usually there's just one or two choices for the triangles. All right, wonderful. So this was one issue. 
where you knew the angle, you knew two of the sides, and you figured out the third side with the law of cosines. Now, let me do one more example where this time you only know the um, sides, which is impressive. So just like the Pythagorean theorem, the law of cosines, um, actually not just like the Pythagorean, not at all, but here, the law of cosines allows you to find all the angles just by knowing the sides of the triangle, which is pretty impressive in my opinion. So for instance, let's try to find this angle. The corresponding hypotenuse is this form. So what the law of cosine says, hypotenuse squared equals two squared plus three squared. And then again, you have to subtract the extra term, which is two times this times this, two times three times cosine of that angle. And then calculating this, so four squared, that's 16, two squared, so four plus nine, that is 13, and then four times three, that is, I believe, uh, sorry, uh, no, sorry, yeah, four times three, that's 12, cosine of question mark. By the way, do not simplify this to minus cosine of question mark, that is not true. So what we get is 16 minus 13 is minus 12 times question, cosine of question mark. So minus 12 cosine of question mark, so I put this here, equals uh, two, three, so cosine of question mark equals minus three over 12. So cosine of question mark equals a minus one quarter. And then we can conclude without a question, okay, that question mark is our cosine of minus one fourth. And by the way, here, you do not need to add or subtract multiples of, um, you know, you, need, you do not need to do this 180 minus the angle business. So here, actually, you can say that question mark is roughly uh, 104.5 degrees. And the reason for this is, um, Basically, for our cosine, it gives you an angle between 0 and 180 degrees. So that's not a big issue. Right? Um, so it gives you a unique angle, whereas for uh, arc sine, that was another issue. All right, so what have we found? So going back to our problem, the sides were 2, 3, 4. And we found this angle to be 104.5 degrees. All right, no problem. So now we just need, you could either use the law of cosines again, or what might be slightly easier now is to use the law of sines. So for instance, let's figure out this angle. It's weird, this was supposed to be a lesson about the law of cosines, but I feel I talk more about the law of sines. So what does the law of sines say? Again, opposite over sine of that angle three over sine of question mark equals four over sine of again 104.5. And then we get four sine of question mark equals three times sine of 104.5. And therefore sine of question mark equals three sine of 104.5 over four, so sine of question mark. Let's see, it's roughly 0 0.73. So question mark is uh, equal to arc sine of 0 0.73, which gives you either 46.9 degrees, or remember for arc sine, you need to do 180 minus this. 180 minus 46.9, which is 133.11, which gives us two scenarios. Again, we have this triangle, 4, 2, 3, 4. Again, we found 104.5 degrees. We found here 133, sorry, we found 46.9.
or again, this other triangle, two, three, four, then 104.5, 46. Point, you know, <laughs> the opposite, 133.11. All right, and um, <laughs> let's see what's happening. So here, if you calculate the, the other angle, sorry. again, gives gives you 180 minus 46.9 minus 104.5. And I believe that is 28.6. Which again, remember our sanity check. This is the smallest angle. This should be the smallest side. This is the medium angle, should be the medium side. This is the biggest angle, should be the biggest side. So this works. How about this one? 180 minus 133.11 minus 104.5. Well, this gives you minus 17.61. It doesn't make sense in this triangle. It should be between. Uh, zero and 180. So in other words, the correct triangle here is this one. And that's very neat. And last but not least, I just want to say, well, all the problems will be somehow in this form where we give you an angle and two sides or just the three sides. But uh, sometimes they do like to trick you. Like there was this other example I've seen where this was 58 degrees and they didn't you tell you this angle, but they told you this angle is 45. Well, um, to figure out this one, I don't know what you call it in English, but in French is angle alterne interne, where if you have two parallel lines, those two angles are the same. So that, that should allow you to find this other angle. And then I think the problem had a bunch of sides and then you can just use the law of cosines. Or another situation I've seen where they try to trick you is they give you this 35 and this 40, and you have to figure out this angle somehow. Well, it's just 180 minus 35 minus 40, which I believe is 105. So again, all the problems are a variation of law of cosines and maybe this figuring out those tricky angles. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.